let's look at a quick introduction for quadratic functions. A quadratic function can be written in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are real numbers we call coefficients. The domain of f, the quadratic function, is all real numbers. In interval notation, that would be negative infinity to positive infinity. The graph of a quadratic function is called a parabola. Parabolas can take on two orientations. They can be opening up a happy face or opening down a sad face. When the leading coefficient a of a parabola is positive, so greater than zero, we have a happy parabola. When the leading coefficient is negative, less than zero, the parabola opens downward. It is a sad parabola. A, remember, is the coefficient on the second degree term up here. At the bottom of the happy parabola and the top of the sad parabola, we have the vertex. It is either the lowest point, the minimum of the graph, and or the highest point, the maximum of the graph. The line that goes through the vertex is known as the axis of symmetry. The distance from the axis of symmetry to any point on the parabola is symmetric about the axis of symmetry. There are actually two ways to write quadratic functions. I presented a quadratic function in standard form above, f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are the coefficients. a is the coefficient on the second degree term, b is the coefficient on the first degree term. If we think about what those values tell us in the shape of the graph of the parabola, we know that the leading coefficient a tells us if the parabola opens up or down. If a is negative, the parabola opens down. If a is positive, then the parabola opens up. It's a smiley face. The other thing that this form gives us for free is the y-intercept. When you plug zero into this function, both the second and the first degree terms disappear, leaving you with the constant c. So the y-intercept is always zero c. Finally, the vertex. The vertex can be yet found using the formula negative b over 2a to find the x-coordinate of the vertex, and f of negative b over 2a to find the corresponding y-coordinate of the vertex. So once you find the x-coordinate, then you're just plugging it into the function you were given to find the corresponding y-coordinate. Therefore, we also have the axis of symmetry, which is, remember, the x-coordinate of the vertex. So to find the axis of symmetry, it's the same, negative b over 2a. Let's look at an example of a function in standard form. Negative 2x squared plus 6x plus 2. a is negative 2 in this case, which is negative, less than 0. Therefore, we know that this parabola opens down. It's going to be a sad parabola. We also get for free the y-intercept, which is the constant c value. So we know the y-intercept is 0, 2. Now we can go ahead and calculate the vertex using our formula negative b over 2a. We'll have negative 6 over 2 times negative 2, which reduces to positive 3 halves, or 1.5 as a decimal value. Now we'll find the y-coordinate of the vertex by plugging in 3 halves into the function. So f of negative b over 2a is f of the x-coordinate, which is 3 halves, and so when I plug 3 halves in for this x, this x, and simplify, I end up getting 13 halves, which is 6.5. So now we have the vertex. It's the point 1.5 comma 6.5. And we can graph this function using those two points and the fact that we know the axis of symmetry, which is the x-coordinate of the vertex. So x equals 1.5, or 3 halves as a, as a fraction. And so 
graphing those two points, the vertex at one and a half comma six and a half and the y-intercept at zero two, we'll go ahead and draw the axis of symmetry so that we can find a symmetric point to our y-intercept of zero two. One and a half units on the other side of the axis of symmetry gives us the point three two. We know that this parabola opens downward and so then we can continue that downward pattern through those two symmetric points we found using the axis of symmetry. So we've graphed a parabola in standard form. Let's go on to the other way that a quadratic function could be written. I'll go ahead and call it general form. This comes from our transformations from chapter three. So our parent function here is x and it's being squared. So what is a, h, and k doing? Well, similarly here, a is the stretch or compression factor. And so if it's positive, the parabola is gonna open up. And if a is negative, it's gonna open down, which was the same in standard form. The vertex though is much easier to find because it's just the horizontal and vertical shift components, h and k. So h, k becomes the vertex. And a lot of times, instead of calling this general form, people will actually call it h, k form. And then we get the axis of symmetry, since we know the x-coordinate of the vertex. The axis of symmetry is the vertical line, x equals h. Let's look at an example. So here we have a function in general form, 3 times x minus 2 squared plus 1. We can see the, that a is greater than 0, so we know this parabola opens up. It's a happy parabola. And we can also see that h is 2 and k is 1, which makes the vertex 2, 1. Therefore, the axis of symmetry, x equals 2, the vertical line at an x value of 2. Let's go ahead and graph this. So we can plot the vertex 2, 1, and we know it opens up, but we don't really have any other information to go off of, of how wide to make this parabola. Is it really skinny or is it really wide? So we need another point, and the y-intercept is usually a good point to find. Plugging 0 into the function gives us a y-intercept of 13. So we'll go ahead and plot 0, 13 on the graph. And then we'll, that'll give us the ability to find its symmetric point across the axis of symmetry. So since this point is two units from the axis of symmetry on the left, if we go two more units on the axis of symmetry to the right, we get our third point on the parabola for 13. So this tells us how wide we should be drawing our parabola.